Hi, Wesley from Triangle Factory here, and welcome to Triangle Factory here, the podcast where we, Triangle Factory, dive into what's going on with our games, what new updates are coming, and what those new updates entail. Welcome to Triangle Factory here. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm Wesley. Uh, I'm, a, I'm the community manager at Triangle Factory. Um, and I am here with my fellow community manager and developer, uh, Orc. Hello there. Hello. How's it going? Hello, hello. I'm good. Very excited for today. Yes, me too. Uh, as I said in the intro, we're super excited to, uh, yeah, to be here and finally talk competitive with all of you. Um, so yeah, let's let's do this. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like, right? Uh, first off, we're gonna start with uh, talking a little bit about the year we've had with Breachers. Um, then we're gonna actually dive into the competitive update. We're gonna take a look at the rewards. We're gonna take a look at you know, the whole flow of joining a competitive game all the way to the end when you win a game. Um, and then after that, we're going to have uh, a little Q&A session uh, with all of you. So if you have questions, uh, be sure to ask them. Yeah, at that time. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah if... we're also going to have a like small teaser look at what we're going to do uh, after competitive. But... I'm not going to share too much about that yet. Yeah, if you have questions, maybe preface it with like a question double point, like two dots, so we can quickly search for it. Because if the chat goes too fast, uh, we might miss it. Yes. But then while we're talking, we can look at it uh, at the end and then maybe still answer your question. So you don't need to spam it. Just a uh, question and then your question and then we can mm -hmm. answer them at the end. Maybe. Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, that's that's a bit about how it's gonna look today, this evening. Um, so why don't we just jump right in? Uh, so we've got an anniversary coming up for Breachers. Uh, oh, do we? Yes, we do. So next month is uh, Breachers anniversary month. Um, yeah, super uh, excited about the fact that you know this game has been out for a year now and. People are still playing it. People are still passionate about it. And we're also super like thrilled to finally get into competitive with all of you. Um, and we're just gonna take a look at like what the year looked like, right? Because we started with the first alpha on November 21st, 2022. Correct? Yes. It was the first alpha. Um, and we did alpha for three, four months? And maybe it was a bit long, maybe a half a year. I don't remember. It was way shorter than the one for Hyper Dead, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but it was free at the time. People could join. Uh, in the beginning, it was very hard to join. Uh, I remember we had a dedicated chat to help people yes. um, get in there. In the end, it went on side quest. Um, and we had a lot of people joining in. Yes, indeed. Over 77,000 users joined the alpha, which like that was a huge number for us. And we were super excited uh, that people were loving the game so much. Uh, and also, I remember the first alpha, uh, fun fact, uh, the first alpha launched during my second week at Triangle Factory. <laughs> like, one of my first assignments was to to make sure that the announcement surrounding the alpha was you know up to yeah. snuff uh, <laughs> so yeah talk so, about a, a stressful uh, first work experience here at triangle factory um but yeah it was super like overwhelming the support that we've uh, that we've seen uh, in the alpha and and since then since the game launched uh, it's been absolutely amazing and we we cannot stress enough how grateful we are to the community uh playing our game um so yeah, official release was April 13th of 2023. Uh, that's when we officially launched the game. Uh, we launched the game with four maps, Skyscraper, Factory, Hideout, and Kill House. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, what happened since then, Orc? Okay, Control Point, Ship, Arctic. We added weapon customization, improved the visuals for Quest 3 and PlayStation VR 2. 
Um, and then, of course, we did our preparations for what's to come later on. Yes, uh, we also launched the skins. Uh, we had our uh, prog level progression. Uh, we, yeah, we changed the icons as well uh, earlier this year, I think, still, or was it like end of last year? Uh, uh, to compare, yeah. like, to prepare for the competitive update, and then of course we also launched Outpost, uh, team deathmatch map, and. The reason why, like, some people were confused as to why we added Outpost, a team deathmatch map, before we did competitive. But I think you'll notice as we get into, like, the competitive deep dive, like, why we did that. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, yeah, it's been a, a wild year with a lot of updates, and we're incredibly hyped to finally get into. Uh, competitive with all of you. So without further ado, shall we do this? Are you or ready? Are you are ready, ready, chat? Are you ready? I hope you are, because uh, yeah, here, here, here we go. So let's address the elephant in the room, which is the competitive update. It's the update that everyone wants to see, that everyone's been waiting for. So I would say let's talk about it, right? Let's do it. Um, nice. Yeah, so first of all, like the first thing that we want to say is, as you can see here on the visual, uh, it says uh, Breacher's Competitive Deep Dive, but it also says Season Zero. And um, we just want to talk a little bit about why we have opted to call it Season Zero. And uh, the main reason behind that is, is that you know, we've tested this update in-house, like with our own developers. We've tested this update with, uh, yeah, with beta players. But uh, there's always a difference between testing, like ourselves, and testing with beta players, versus, you know, giving the update to all of the players and having everyone play uh, the game. And for competitive, that's not any different, right? It's gonna be, there's gonna be things that we missed. There's gonna be uh, values that need to be tweaked. There's gonna be things that we didn't account for. And that's why we've opted to, yeah, to call the first season, season zero. Uh, because throughout this season, we're gonna, yeah, tweak some things, uh, tweak some values. Yeah, that's kind of the reasoning behind us calling it season zero. It'll give us, a nice base to finally then like when we go to season one and two and so forth that we have like a decent solid base to uh to basically build upon uh right orc yeah we uh we, we spend a lot of time on this we feel confident uh mm -hmm. about what we're releasing but the thing is we you can test it with a few people like 50 people you can test it with a few hundred maybe but it doesn't compare to uh all the players across mm -hmm. the world um something will have fallen through the cracks and having the possibility to have some uh algorithm changes if needed um fixing a bug that we didn't expect to see coming mm -hmm. um related to like cross continent communications yeah it has happened before like that. <laughs> um, indeed uh so that's it why just, it's possible yeah that's why we're calling it season zero uh, but it being season zero does not mean that you won't get any rewards or anything, because uh, you will get rewards, and we will going we'll, we'll be taking a look at those rewards as well. But before we do, we do want to take a look at the uh, yeah basically what you need to achieve to get those rewards, because there's yeah there's something there as well. So as you can see here on the on the slide. Uh, so the first thing that you'll need to do to get rewards is uh, your five placement matches, which makes sense because, you know, we need to have a rank uh, assigned to you to know what rewards you'll be getting. Um, so that's why the five placement matches are there uh, to, yeah, to basically give you a rank after five placement matches to see where you where you end up. Um, and then uh, to actually unlock rewards that you've earned, you will need to play 30 competitive matches. And we've done it this way uh, to ensure that, you know, you've first of all, you've played enough of competitive. 
Um, but also this way we'll, we'll have a better idea of, you know, the rank that you've gotten and the, the, basically the journey that you've been through during this competitive season. Um, and yeah, it's basically a threshold for the rewards that, that you'll be getting. Um, and then there's also a season bonus for people who play 50 competitive matches in the season. You'll be able to earn an extra 250 credits as part of a season completion bonus. So that's five placement matches to get your rank, uh, 30 competitive matches to unlock your rewards that you've earned, and a season bonus at 50 competitive matches to, uh, yeah, to receive the season completion bonus. And I think that now is the time that we show off what you'll be getting. Ooh, Ooh indeed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, so here is an overview of all of the rewards that you'll be getting. Orc, do you want to get into explaining this? Yes. So we have different ranks you can get. You can start with bronze, and then in bronze we have bronze one, bronze two, bronze three. Silver, we have one, two, three. We have gold, one, two, three. Platinum, one, two, three. And diamond, one, two, three. Then after that, you can be master, grand master. And if you are very good, you can be one of the people that will get global champion. Yes, indeed. Uh, so yeah, as Orc mentioned, bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond. Uh, those are all tiers where you ha will have basically three levels and every tier comes with its own skin. Um, and yeah, for Master and Grandmaster, you also have a separate skin there. Uh, and what I want to like explain right now is the way that you'll be getting these rewards. So first of all, to get any of this, you'll need to play the 30 matches, but also the skins that you see will only be distributed at the end of the season which means that during the season, you won't be able to unlock these skins. It's only when the season ends that you'll get, uh, that you'll get the skins uh, corresponding with, uh, with the ranks. Um, and the credits will be distributed as soon as you've reached the 30 game uh, threshold. So if you've completed your 30 games, you'll get the uh, credits immediately, basically. Um, Another important thing to mention here is that the uh, the skins that you get are determined by the highest point in your competitive career that you have reached in that season. So to give like a, a, a clear example of this, so imagine ending the season at Diamond 1, but throughout the season you manage to get up to Master, you will still receive the Master skin at the end of the season, because that's your season high, basically. Um, so it doesn't matter if you then derank again, you'll still get that skin. But there's one thing, one tier that has a little bit of an exception here, right, Orc? Yeah, Global Champion is a ladder system. Um, so only the top 50 will have that. Um, and this skin you need to be in the top 50 at the end of the season to get that skin. If you are not in the top 50 at the end of the skin, the highest you will have gotten is Grandmaster. Yes. Um, so Indeed. for the top 50, it's a constant fight to stay one of the top 50. Yes, because like we wanted to, like with Global Champion, we wanted to avoid people, you know, getting to Global Champion and then stop playing so that they get the skin. That's not going to work. Because uh, as soon as you get there, you will have to fight to keep your post, basically. If you stop playing, it might happen that another player gets above you on the leaderboard and you'll be demoted back to Grandmaster. It is a possibility. So uh, that way we want to avoid people just stop playing when they reach uh, Global Champion. Um, so yeah, I think that's like an entire overview of, well, the ranks and the rewards that come with it. Um, I love the Grandmaster skin in particular. I'm just really sad 
about the fact that I will probably not <laughs> unlock it. <laughs> you can try, Wesley. I can try. Nobody's stopping you. True, I can try, but I I don't know. I don't believe in myself <laughs> that much. I do. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's basically uh, the overview. But how will it work, Orc? Yes. Now that we have done all the what you can gain from season one, we'll go over how playing a match works. Mm -hmm. We'll start with how you join, then we'll talk about um, the leaving and the penalties attached to that, and then as last, we'll talk about ending the end of matches and then getting your points. Yes, indeed. So as Orc just mentioned, uh, we're gonna start with joining a game, obviously. So as you can see here, uh, the first screenshot is what you'll see if you want to uh, start competitive. There's the competitive button. It also says season zero. So if you click that, uh, you get into the menu that is displayed in the second screenshot. Um, there you can start your queue. Now you have the choice to do this either alone or as a party, but that's a choice that we leave up to you. If you want to solo queue, go right ahead, go for it. If you want to queue with some friends in a party, that's also possible. Um, so yeah, if you then press start queue, you'll start queuing and you'll see your uh, queuing on your wrist HUD as well. In the final screenshot, you can see uh, there's, yeah, there's some, some wrist HUD uh, to tell you that you're searching for a competitive match. And that's also where you can cancel the search if you want to or need to. Um, but if you look at the second screenshot, there's another button grayed out there, Or Yes. While you are in a competitive queue, you can play Team Deathmatch. So you will can click on the Team Deathmatch button. It will put you in a server that can only play Team Deathmatch matches. Um, it's like while you're waiting for a competitive match to be found. Once a competitive match has then been found, you'll be taken out of the server and be brought to your competitive server. So you don't need to sit still in your menu and not know what to do. You can warm up, you can just have a bit of fun um, in a team that match, or you can even try to be the best one there, but you can play the game while you're waiting for a competitor. Yes, and this is something we really, really wanted to add because we really, like, w when we were testing, we were like, it, this is really tedious. Like, waiting for a competitive match is really tedious. And so we implemented this uh, where you can play Team Deathmatch, and that way the waiting is less bad, I'd say. And, and it also gives you an opportunity, like Orc said, to, uh, to warm up. Um, but you don't have to do this. You can also just explore the main menu scene if you want to. Uh, and here there's one more important thing that I want to share uh, because we were thinking about what happens with credits, right? While you're queuing. Uh, and in order to avoid any problems with, you know, like transactions going wrong while you're queuing and stuff like that, we've just disabled buying credits while you are queuing for competitive. Um, so we're disabling that. However, your existing credits that you already have, you will still be able to use those to buy skins and apply those skins to weapons while you're queuing, but you just can't buy any new credits while you're queuing because that would open up an entire can of worms of problems that we really, really want to avoid. And it's like, it, it's an issue for both the player and the developer. Uh, so we've opted to uh, to disable that feature uh, while you're queuing. And um, yeah, what happens then, Orc? Well, a match gets found. Uh, you all join the same lobby. Um, normally you would have map voting, but map voting starts at the moment everybody is in the lobby. Mm -hmm. So once there are 10 people in the lobby, you can vote for the map you want to play Bomb mm -hmm. Defusal on. Um, if not everybody joins the lobby, then the match gets cancelled before it starts and you all go back to the main menu. Um, just to ensure that the match starts with everybody basically in there. So um, if somebody somehow can't join or something happens, then you don't want to have a bad start when the match starts. Just the match starts with 5v5 um, and 
we hope it ends with five people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like like Org said, like we didn't want to have games start from the get go with like a player missing or two players missing or whatever. So the map voting only becomes available when all teams, like both teams, are filled up with five people each. Um, so that way we can avoid any um, yeah like tedious starts. Uh, two games where someone's missing. Um, that was really, really important to us. Although this doesn't, of course, stop people from leaving uh, the game, even at the start of the game. Uh, but we do have something for that as well. Yeah. So leaving is still possible. Um, if you try to leave, we'll t like double ask you if you're sure. Um, if you're sure you can leave, um, you just won't be able to play any other online matches. Uh, you will be locked out of Breacher's multiplayer, in a sense. Um, you can still rejoin the same server uh, or the same match. So if you, for some reason, had to restart your headset or you were disconnected, you can join again, no problem. Um, you just won't be allowed to play any other multiplayer game until that match is done. Yes, indeed. And this is also like to dissuade people from leaving um because there's yeah it's super annoying when you're playing a match especially a competitive match and yeah one of your players on your team just up and leaves at the start of the game that's super heckin annoying uh, or even just throughout the game um so yeah there's always a friendly warning so that you don't leave accidentally because yeah we also thought about that we don't want you to be able to leave on accident and so that's why there's the extra pop-up your team needs you um, <clears throat> and indeed you're blocked out of uh, multiplayer matches in breachers uh, until the match that that you joined the competitive match ends what if you're on the other side of this though Orc? if you're on the other side of this conversation um, then if it happens before the second round you will have the option to cancel it at the start of the second round. And if your team votes to cancel, then the match gets cancelled without losing any skill points for everybody that's there. Mm -hmm. um, from the second round onwards, you can request a surrender vote. Uh, and that then the next buy phase, you will be able to vote for that. And if the vote then either sur if the vote then goes for a surrender, that surrender will impact skill points. Yes, indeed. So the difference here is with <clears throat> with cancelling a match, uh, you basically don't, like, it doesn't have any impact on your skill point uh, rating, but, yeah, surrendering a match will actually count as a loss and will have an impact on, um, on your uh, skill point uh, rating. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's these two options, especially, like, at the start of a match when a player leaves or two players leave, uh, it's important to be able to cancel that match without any repercussions. Although the person that did leave, well, they they might have some yes. some some we, uh, we, consequences. We do, have, we do have penalties in place. Yes. So if a match gets cancelled um, and you are not there, then you will get a small skill point deduction, and the, the skill point deduction increases with every offense. And so all the other people that were in the match when it got cancelled do not get affected but you as person that left does get affected yes and, and this is and again then... like yeah this is again to dissuade people from actually leaving uh the people that stayed will not be affected like even if they cancel uh but the person that left uh will yeah if you're disconnected for more than 10 minutes in total so this could be two minutes three minutes up to 10 together counted together then you will get a larger skill point deduction um there will be no B xp be awarded for that match even are you even if you are still there um and you will get notified if that's the case yes indeed indeed um <clears throat> yeah so we've we've talked about the penalties we've talked about surrendering canceling we've talked about leaving we've talked about joining uh but Let's just say that none of this, like, as, uh, apart from, like, joining the game <laughs> and playing the game, <laughs> uh, yes. none of this, like, went wrong. And you had a terrific match, so terrific even, that 
you end up with a tie. What happens then? Yes, if there's a tie, then the the, the team with the highest score, uh, you can see this in the menu, um, will have the option to decide what side they want to start the next round. And that next round, the, also the final round, uh, will then decide who wins the full match. Yes, indeed. So it's basically a tiebreaker round to decide uh, yeah, w which, which team actually wins. Um, and in the event, and this is something that is highly unlikely to happen, but it technically still could happen, is where two teams tie and their score also ties. Like, again, mm -hmm. the chances of that, very, very slim, but it, it's still there. Um, if that happens, it'll basically be a coin toss between the teams, 50-50% uh, chance on, yeah, which team can actually choose what side they'll play on in the tiebreaker round. Um, so yeah, that's that's how that would get resolved if it uh, if it presents itself. And when you're done, obviously you'll get to see your level up screen, you'll see your experience, etc. Uh, and when you then go to the lobby, you'll see your rank changes. So if you are doing your placement matches, you'll there see like how many of them you've already completed. And if you've completed all of them, you'll get your rank. And if you are already ranked, you'll see your change in your uh, skill points um, there as well. And I think one more like important note on this is that after the game, you can still chat with you know your team and the other team and you can have a little bit of conversation, but it's not like you can start up a new game right there like the server will actually end and you'll have to requeue for a new competitive match basically um i think that's still important to mention and that's also one of the differences with quick play and quick play when you when you end a match like you just vote for the next map and you can just go again in competitive that won't be possible you'll have to requeue for a new match and uh, then we have one more slide here with, uh, yeah, some players and some skins showing them off. Uh, we figured we'd throw this in here as well to like have you see a, a closer look at all the skins um, and not in like an overview of the rewards, but actually in game. I think they look really, really neat. What's your favorite work? Yeah, I really like the platinum one. It has a good shine to it. Nice. Yeah, I already said my, mine is the Grandmaster, but yeah, we'll we'll see <laughs> if I can unlock it. We'll, uh, we'll 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 see about that. We'll see about that. And we're super super excited to bring you this update finally uh, to have you all play and experience competitive breachers. It's uh, yeah, it's it's been a journey, and we're super super excited. And then there's one final question that remains, that everyone wants to know the, the answer to, right? The question as old as time. <laughs> the question that has plagued us for very, very long. <laughs> and that question is, when is comp releasing? <laughs> it's not gonna be years, I'll tell you that much, um, but you all know us. We are usually not really fond of giving you a date because of obvious reasons. Uh, we did that before with the PlayStation VR 2 launch and we were like really confident and then, well, it, it didn't. It, it has changed like three times since we were writing this and planning this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we can't give you an exact number, like as in a day, but what we can tell you is that competitive will release by the end of next month. So by the end of April, if everything goes well, competitive should be here in Breachers. That's I'm super cool. excited. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now I'm... people no longer have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that one meme with like the Finding Nemo seagulls where they're like ranked, 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 yeah, ranked. Right. I love that one so much because uh, <laughs> it's really been my experience. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but yeah, so by the end of next month, um, Competitive will be in Breachers, and we're super excited to uh, yeah to share this update with you. It's undoubtedly the hardest update that we've worked on. It's been the most exciting one to have worked on. Uh, so yeah, we yeah we're we're super excited that the time is finally almost here. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna go over into uh, the Q and A section. So if you have any additional questions, please ask them in the chat so that we can uh, take a look. Yeah. Uh, we won't I, be I able to those. ask. Uh, yeah, we won't be able to answer every question just because well we're on a bit unlimited time. Uh, we can't go on endlessly, uh, but we will try our best to uh, answer as many questions as possible. Yeah, I also noticed that Discord search has like a three minute delay or something. So get your questions in. <laughs> yeah. <I> just <laughs> yeah. So get them in now. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, as some extra questions are coming in, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about, uh, well, something that I still want to mention and then also give a little bit of a tease of what comes after the competitive update. Um, so the first thing I wanted to still talk about is uh, one thing that we forgot to talk about earlier, and that is uh, how long will a season be, uh, Orc? Yeah, a season will be. Let me make sure I'm correct. We'll have four seasons, yes. and each season will be three months long. Yes, exactly. Uh, so four seasons a year, uh, and three months each. That's the length of uh, the seasons that we're looking for. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's just, I've seen the question pop up as well already. Uh, so there's that. Uh, and then, um, yeah, beyond the competitive update, while the questions are still rolling in, uh, we hope to release three maps this year. And one of them has already released, and that's Outpost. You've all played it already. Um, that's a team deathmatch map. Uh, but there are two more maps, like confirmed to be coming this year. And yeah. we can't say too much about them, but I can I say, say yeah, I can say that one of them is pretty damn cool. You'll know what that means when it gets here. Uh, <laughs> it's not that subtle, but uh, anyway. <laughs> Another winter map, yes, exactly. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> North Pole, I think they have it. Yeah, um, it's 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 an Arctic map, y'all. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> uh, and then there's another one. Do you want to tease? The other um. One? Well, the other one is um. A place that we used to go to to buy things and yeah. hang out. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this one was even less subtle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we can't really say more than that yet. Uh, but yeah, there we will. There's still stuff coming after the competitive update um and we're very excited about it both of the stuff that comes after but also the competitive update itself um so yeah i think it's time that we can go uh into the questions sounds good i'm checking some more but yeah we can start yes um right let's see um so dudster asked uh will ranked um have seasons or elo resets um yeah, i'm not sure if we use the exact elo ranking but i know we use some of the data or like the ranking to yeah. then make sure that you're at the good position for the next season yes um, so there's some data being transferred over to the next seasons so that you don't have to start at bronze two every time or like bronze one um but we do forget the ranking you had originally and you start again. yes Exactly. Again, with five placement matches. Yes, thank you. Uh, is global champion per region or globally is one of the questions that uh, we've gotten. Um, Orc, is it regional or worldwide? It is worldwide. Yes. There's... So it's not bound to your region. It is a worldwide 
uh, rating. Will we be able to do 1v1s in custom lobbies, for example, by disabling bots? And I'm very happy to say that uh, disabling bots for custom lobbies is finally coming in the competitive update. So yeah. that's finally going to be I think be it's in. also worth adding here, um, there are no bots in comp. Yes, true, indeed. That was also a question I saw both. Uh, what's the ELO system? I saw people question about that. I don't know the details again. I'm not the person that looked at this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard whispers of terms, um, but it is based on Clicko. That's the only thing I know. Uh, the rest is, I don't know the numbers. Uh, it's also not an important thing, but for the people that are interested, that's some basis. Yes. Um, all right, and then a big question, uh, something we've been asked about a lot, um, and I've seen the question pop up like multiple times in the chat as well, even now. Um, but uh, yeah, will there be anti-cheat? What's happening with anti-cheat? What are we doing about anti-cheat? Um, yeah, Orc, what are, what's happening on the anti-cheat front for breachers? Yeah, first, will there be anti-cheat? There has always been an anti-cheat. Um, it's just most of our anti-cheat that we're doing is server-side so that client can't snoop it too much. Um, but we understand that some stuff has been gone through. We've been looking at it. And uh, we are currently in the process of adding easy anti-cheat. Um, and we hope to have that be out with comp, but it might be soon after. Yes, indeed. Uh, we're, yeah, as Orc said, we're looking into it and we want to ship it with the competitive update, uh, but it's possible that it'll, it'll be a little bit later. Um, we'll still have to see. But yeah, things are happening on that front. Uh, like we've all also always stated, like we do have an anti cheat and we're um, like devoted to, you know, keep advancing it and uh, to keep updating it. Um, and yeah, it, it's yeah, it's something that we do think about, and it's something that we do care about. Um, so yeah, easy anti cheat. We're looking into it um, to help with uh, with that. Um, next up, um, can we still join custom lobbies when leaving uh, a ranked match? The answer to that is no, uh, because uh, as we said earlier, like. Uh, when you leave a competitive match, you are locked out of all on online play in Breachers. So you won't be able to start a custom match, you won't be able to join quick play until that competitive match you left is over. You do have the option to reconnect to that competitive match, but you won't be able to play any other online mode uh, on Breachers. This is to dissuade people from, yeah, leaving a competitive yeah. match and doing something else. Um, and uh, the next one is, are you able to spectate comp lobbies? And uh, no, there is no spectating options for those servers. So no extra clients can join in. I also saw the question, is the leaving penalty only for competitive? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, it won't apply to quick play, for instance. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a different beast, right? Uh, quick play is more casual. And for competitive, you're actually engaging in like, you know, you, you you actually dedicate your time to a competitive match. And <clears throat> for quick play, it's always more casual. And so that's why we decided to keep those two separate uh, on the penalty regard. Then we got a question about how it determines where the server gets hosted. Um, and it's the same system that is used by quick play. Um, so it's ping based and ping based of like the players that are in the server and then of course we have the extra layer of the rankings to try to put similar ranking people together. Yeah so another question uh, from Nolan was uh, for the rank skins will you only be given the highest gun skin or will you get all the skins you unlocked and the answer to that is you will, will get all the skins that you unlocked so if you end the season in let's say diamond 2 uh, you will you will get the skin for bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Uh, the only exception to that is global champion, where like 
Yeah, if you were once global champion during your competitive season, but you get demoted back to Grandmaster, you won't be getting the uh, global uh, champion skin because you have to end the season in global champion to get that skin. For all of the other skins, it's basically the highest rank that you've achieved that counts towards your rewards. I, then I saw some people uh, ask questions about voice. Um, we are in talks with Vivox to try to figure this out and have this solved, but we can't really say anything more than that. Yes, indeed. We, like, we've noticed the issues. Uh, we're in talks with Vivox and there's yeah there's not a lot more that we can do uh, on that part but we hope to have like yeah a fix for this soon do the skins change every season <laughs> i just gotta send a message yes <laughs> <laughs> beautiful beautiful <laughs> it's the triangle factory was, synergy yeah, right here <laughs> I, I wasn't sure anymore um so it's going to be unique skins every season. Yes. <laughs> right. Um, perfect timing indeed. <laughs> Are the rank skins only for the Vezin? Um, I think for this season, for season zero, they are only for the Vezin. Uh, but yeah, for other seasons, that's still to be decided. Um, is there a minimum level for ranked? Uh, there currently isn't, um, but it's always a possibility that we add it if we see a need for it. Yes. I mean, this is also like a, a, a thing that I just want to comment on. Like it, we we do value player feedback. And so, you know, especially during the season zero, we'll be looking at the players to see, you know, what we can improve, what we can add, uh, what needs to change. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're dedicated to make competitive as great as it can be. That's yeah. basically what I wanted to say. Uh, this one, I didn't have to yell this, but um, I'll answer it anyway. When you disconnect from rank, how long do you have till you reconnect back? Um, you can reconnect as long as the match is going. Yes. Um, there's no real limit to that. But if you're gone longer than the 10 minutes total, you do get penalized for it. Yes, indeed. Uh, if people keep winning, do they get a winner streak in ranked? Um, I don't think there's any like specific mention of you know this player is on a winning streak or anything but of course this will be good for your uh for your skill points uh what are your plans when there are still closet cheaters with easy anti-cheat um this isn't the end for cheating right we, yes we know it still happens um we we want to build out our tools uh, our own internal tools that run on servers and do checks um so that we can even find cheaters if it gets past that. Yes. And this also like gets back to the point we made earlier, like we're dedicated to keep evolving our anti-cheat efforts. And like, I feel like there's always going to be a way around something, but we are dedicated to not stop, you know, getting ahead of that again and again and again, um, as it's like, it's just important for the health of the game overall for us and also for our players. Um, it's in both of our like best interests to, to, to keep evolving anti-cheat. Will you get more XP for playing ranked? Um, if you looked good at the slides, uh, you get 50% more XP when playing comp. Yes. If you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the questions for team, channel, uh, we'll try our best to answer as many questions as we can. Our moderators will also help answering questions of like the things that were seen in this presentation. Uh, and the full uh, podcast episode will also be viewable on YouTube starting Wednesday somewhere. Um, so, yes. Um, yeah, I want to thank you all so much for being here. I want to thank you all so much for watching and sharing your excitement over the competitive update that is coming before the end of next month. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I wish you all a great rest of your day. And uh, yeah, thanks for playing Breachers. Yes, thanks for playing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>